welcome. You'll need a compass, a protractor, and a French curve to figure out who's in the NCAA tournament. Luckily for me, I've got Tim Gardner, USA Today resident expert, uh, who does the bubble tracker for us. Tim, I'm just going to throw out a few teams <laughs> Let's do on it. you because it's confusing, man. It's going to be hectic last week. Marquette. Uh, well, there's there's a long list of teams. Before we right. get started, there's a long list of teams that can play their way in or play their way out this week. A lot is going to depend on how they do, how the other bubble teams do, but also how many bids get stolen. So when you talk about Marquette, nine and nine in the Big East, uh, you know, 500 in the Big East, which was the toughest conference in the country. That's close to good enough, but they're under 500 against the top 200. That's a number that I always look at as very important to getting into the field. They need to beat Providence, possibly beat West Virginia to climb back in. That's the French curve, now the protractor. There we go. That's BC, and then the, how the ACC falls. Well, right now we've got all three of these teams in the field currently in the bubble tracker. That's Boston College, Clemson, and Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech currently holds the last spot in the field. Clemson a little higher, BC just above them, but not by much. Um, BC plays Wake Forest, they win that, they're looking better, but then they play Clemson. Uh, it, whoever wins that Clemson-BC game might be in, the loser might end up falling out. For Virginia Tech, they play Georgia Tech first and then Florida State. I still think they might need a signature win, a quality win, to remain in the field. So looking to win that game against the Seminoles might be key. Calculator, the 33rd time we'll mention Colorado and how what falls after that. A, a lot of people have Colorado in. I don't. Quite frankly, they, they, they finished at 500 in the Big 12. They are still 10 and 12 against the top 200. And they have a terrible non-conference strength of schedule. And they did nothing out of conference. So, you know, you have five top 50 wins. That's great. But I need, I, I need some other numbers to overshadow what you know, the blemishes on their resume, I don't think they have it yet. Can they play their way in? Sure. If they beat Iowa State in the first round of the Big 12 tournament, then they get Kansas State. They beat K-State, I think they get in. Now, whatever happens to Colorado will not be a surprise. However, our preseason number two team yes. was Michigan State. They must play their way in, and it's going to be more than one game. Well, that, not for certain, okay. but, but very close. Uh, they got Iowa in the first round of the Big 10 tournament. I think they win that. But then you face Purdue. And I think with that game, with their schedule, with their resume and their strength of schedule, that game is going to be a critical eye test for the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee. I don't know if they have to win it, but you certainly can't get blown out. Um, you know, the Spartans had high hopes, but you just can't afford to let a 20-point loss in the Big Ten Tournament be the last thing they see. And I cannot afford a DVR, so I'm going to ask you for a quick one. I can only watch one conference tournament. And that was, should be? Big East, no question about it. I mean, I mean, if you want to see some rough and tough basketball for five consecutive days, check out the Big East tournament. And, and quite frankly, it might be tougher to win that tournament this year than it will be to win the NCAA tournament. Tim Gardner, Reed Turner, Bubble Tracker. We'll be back again.